Welcome back to Wellness Wednesday. We asked today's experts to stay with us so we could continue our conversations about health and wellness. Please welcome back Dr. Wick from Evergreen Health Signature Care. We're gonna shorten you up. Midwife Lisa Arnold from Swedish and Dr. Robert Heisinga. Thank you all for staying with us. Um, let me start with you, Robert. The, this idea of going into your doctor and asking for testing and getting a thorough exam, what exactly do I need to ask for? Well, there's 10 major STDs that we're worried about. Four of them you do with urine tests, and if appropriate, a rectal or oral swab, and those are chlamydia, mycoplasm, gonorrhea, and trichomonas. And then four you do by blood tests, and that tends to be HIV, herpes, and uh, let's see, the other two are syphilis, and there's one more, and then the two you look for, and that's uh, HPV, which is a pap smear, right. or a, a herpes test on the cervix and looking in the mouth, and then the last is lice, where you look for. So that's that's ten tests, and blood, urine, and visual. So you got to be thorough. You can't just ask for a chlamydia test and an HIV and think that that's a thorough evaluation. And if you ask your doctor, are they likely to say yes? Is this something that you they can... should? But many doctors are unaware of the new mycoplasm test, for instance, and they won't even offer that to you. Good grief. Okay, we've got so to get sad. your book in everybody's hands so we get this taken care of. Um, let's talk about the difference between a midwife and a doula. We got that question from uh, a viewer, and I think that's a really good question. That is a good question. Um, so midwives are registered nurses first, and then they go on to receive more training by um, receiving either a master's or a doctorate in nursing practice. So there's a lot of medical training that goes into preparing to be a midwife, whereas a doula is there for support. A doula provides emotional, informational, and physical support to a okay. woman while she's laboring during the process. If you go to a midwife, can you still get an epidural? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Which is really important there, question for most women. There is no best way to have a baby. You know, we will inform women about the different options and answer any questions that she has, and then we encourage each woman to make the choice that feels best for her, and our role is then to support that choice. Whatever okay. makes her feel empowered is the best choice for her. Well, and perhaps that pregnant woman can use the guided meditation that you talked about. Mm -hmm. And there are loads of apps for that, right, that are low cost or free, so anybody can do that. But let's talk about some other ways that we can make a daily practice out of controlling or managing stress. What do you suggest? So two things I tell my patients all the time. Um, one is don't wait till stresses get to you. Start practicing these things that we discussed from now when you're not stressed and introduce them to your children. Children, because our kids are growing in a more stressful society than we grew up in and so um, introduce them to meditation yoga everything that we discussed good nutrition um, so don't wait till stress gets to you be ahead of the game so you prevent stress the second one is if you're already going under a lot of stress don't end your day without trying at least one of the few things that we discussed incorporate a couple of things into your day-to-day um, life don't don't end your day accumulating stress and carrying it over to the next day try to resolve that before exactly. you go to sleep mm -hmm. at night that makes sense um, dr. Heisinga another question about prevention of, of STDs you mentioned that condoms don't always work most people think well if over reliance on condoms. exactly most people think that that's gonna work and that's it we've what, got to use what the, should we be doing we've got vaccines tremendous vaccines against the various types of herpes and excuse me, we've got vaccines against the various types of hepatitis mm -hmm. and HPV, and then we now have medication that you can take preventatively, prophylactically for HIV, as well as chlamydia and syphilis, and these are, these are avenues that are very rarely employed fully. Well, I, you know, honestly, I didn't even know there were such things. So we need to get consumers educated about this, right? So that we've we all got to be educated. And things. you know, the, our federal government is so overwhelmed and so underfunded that they're not doing their job to educate Americans. So we're going to have to do it ourselves. So in abstinence only education in schools, what are the risks that we're running? Well, abstinence only does slightly lower the risk of STDs acquired through vaginal intercourse, but there turns out to be much more oral sex much more rectal sex, which kids unfortunately think are safe and nothing could be further from the truth. Many STDs can be passed via oral sex and there's epidemics now of herpes simplex 1 which is passed with oral sex that, that can present in multiple different areas. And there are a number of other epidemics, again HPV, which is passed through oral intercourse. What would you say to parents who just don't want this kind of material in their kid's school day? Mm -hmm. Get your head out of the sand and accept reality and let's Let's accept sex, which is a great, healthy activity, and let's make it safe and enjoyable. 
you know, I think that you all have intertwined topics today because we have we have sexual practices, we have babies being born, <laughs> and then there's a lot of stress as a result of, of that that we need to work on. Are there any nutritional things that we should be doing to, to kind of combat the stress in our everyday lives? Can